So, recall that in the previous lecture we had proved this nice result. So, in the previous lecture we proved that S O n is connected. So, before we proceed let me make uh, the following remark. So, if we replace so, using the same, so uh, using the same methods or using similar ideas, we can also show that S U N and U n are connected. So, recall what is S u n? S u n is all those complex matrices, complex and crossing matrices such that A star A is equal to identity and determinant of A is equal to 1 and U n is all those A in M n C which are really the first condition. The unitary matrices, right. So, just as in case of S O n, we define this map to S n minus 1. So, for U n, we define this map to S uh, 2 n minus 1. So, uh, so, here a matrix A gets sent to the first column. Yeah. Now, uh, the inner product a e 1 comma a e 1 is equal to. So, in the case of u n we use the standard metric uh, sorry standard inner product on c n which is given by v comma w is defined to be w star v and recall that w star is equal to W transpose conjugate. So, we have a column vector and we take its transpose and conjugate all the entries. So, this with this definition this inner product is going to become uh, A e 1 star A e 1 which is equal to E 1 star a star A E 1 and since A star A is equal to identity because A is in U n there is going to be E 1 star E 1 which is equal to 1 right. But also notice that the columns the column of A the first column consists of complex numbers Z 1, Z 2 up to Z n right and if each of these Z i if I write it as Z j if I write it as X j plus I Y j right where x i comma x j comma y j are real numbers, then this implies that since the inner product is 1, this implies that summation mod z i square is equal to 1, which implies that summation x okay, x j square plus y j square j equal to 1 to n is equal to 1, which implies that we actually get an element of a e 1 can be viewed as an element of, of S 2 n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, let us call this map, okay, if we call this map psi and we call this map phi. Yeah. So, uh, over here we prove that in this situation we prove that phi of A is equal to phi of B if and only if B inverse A belongs to is a matrix of this type, there is something in S 1 minus 1, right. So, here we will have to prove that uh, psi of A is equal to psi of B if and only if B inverse A uh, is equal to is in 1 0 0 u n minus 1 right 
And then the base case, so uh, the base case for the induction. will be u1, which is, we can easily check is homeomorphic to s1, which is connected. Right. And similarly, the base case for, so in the same way, we can define a map from sun. So we, again, let me call this psi 1, s2 and minus 1. Once again, this map is a goes to ae1. Right, and here the base case for the induction will be SU1, which is simply 1, which is connected. Okay. So, uh, so the details are left as an exercise. So, having said this, let us begin with uh, today's lecture. Uh, so, today, uh, we will start our discussion on compact metric spaces. So, basically, we are going to, so the main theorem of this lecture is the following. Let x be a metric space, then x is compact, if and only if every sequence in x has a convergent subsequence. So, let us prove this. First, let us assume that, uh, first assume that x is compact. Okay. Uh, and suppose we are given a, a sequence x n where m is greater than or equal to 1. So, we are given the sequence of points and we want to show that S has a convergent subsequence. So, let this be a sequence in X. Okay. Uh, so, if S is finite, so if the cardinality of S is finite, uh, so then there is some or, yeah, so there is some x in xn in S such that x is equal to xnj for infinitely many njs. For infinitely many indices, right? So, uh, and then so we can take this sub we can take this subsequence right so this sub subsequence in this subsequence every element all the elements are the same and therefore obviously it converges uh, so let us assume so let us assume that cardinality of s is infinite so, we may replace S by a subsequence of S. So, since we may replace S by a subsequence of S, so we may assume that all elements of S Are distinct. Yeah. So 
So the cardinality of s is infinite. So therefore, we can find a subset which is infinite and which contains uh, and each member of that subsequence is uh, all the members of that subsequence are different. So if you can find a subsequence of this subsequence which converges, then we would have found a subsequence of s which converges. So we can assume this. Uh, so let y be the closure of s in x. Okay. So if so s is a set of points like this, and if y minus s is not empty, that means there is uh, some point x naught in y in y minus s, right? Then there is a point x naught in y minus s, right? And uh, as x naught belongs to s closure, this implies uh, when we take any neighborhood of x naught b 1 upon n x naught uh, intersection s is not empty, right? And this implies that there exists a sequence of x n in s such that x n converges to s naught. Uh, so, so we are done in this case. So we are done. So if y minus s is not empty, then we have found. So let me say there is a sequence y m because y m. Is that y m converges to x naught. Okay. So then we have found a subsequence in S which converges. Okay. So let us assume that y minus s is empty. So note that s is always contained in s closure which is equal to y and y minus s is empty implies that y is equal to s is equal to s closure uh, right uh, if now if xn so if xn is any point in S uh, and there is a subsequence in S converging to Xn, then we are done. Right? So, for instance, we may have we can take a sequence like this. And this sequence may converge to this point xn over here. Yeah. So let's assume that. So thus, we may assume that for every there is no sub. Uh, subsequence in S which converges to, to Xn. In other words, uh, what this means is for every X, uh, for every Xn, there is a small neighborhood. So for every Xn, in other words, in other words, For every xn, there is a neighborhood B delta n of xn such that B delta n 
of xn intersected s is just this xn okay uh, okay so now as y is s closure and this is equal to s this implies s is a compact is a closed subspace of a compact space of a compact space right recall that we had assumed x is compact yeah so thus s is compact closed subspace of a compact space is compact right however we may write s as the union over n greater than equal to 1 d delta n xn intersected s right this is uh, xn right this is simply equal to union n greater than equal to 1 xn xn right yeah this shows that S has a uh, an open cover which has no finite subcover. Which is a contradiction. Okay. So uh, so this completes the proof of one part. So this shows that. S has a converging subsequence. Okay, so now let's prove the converse. So to prove the converse, next we prove the converse. So let us assume that. So suppose every sequence in x has a convergence of sequence okay. so we shall show that x is compact okay so for this let us begin with an open cover b an open cover of x right so our aim is to construct a finite subcover of this okay uh, so we make a claim there is a delta greater than 0 which works for all x such that when we take this open net open set b delta x right so we are given we are given our space x and this has an open cover right so no matter which x we choose when we take this ball of radius delta around x it will be contained in one of the uis yeah is contained in u i for some i okay is completely contained in one of the u i's so uh, let us prove this so proof claim one so if claim one is not true Uh, then for each so no matter how small we take delta uh, there will be an x says that the ball of radius delta around x is not going to be contained in any of the uis right so for each n greater than equal to 1 there is 
and xn such that we take b1 upon n xn is not contained in ui for any i right so let us take s to be the sequence of xn okay so then there is by our assumption there is a convergent sequence a convergent subsequence x and j and let us say this converges to some x naught in x. Okay. So, there is some u naught such that x naught is in u naught in our open cover and uh, for this u naught, yeah, there is an epsilon, epsilon positive, such that this ball of radius epsilon around x naught is contained in u naught. Right. So our u naught could be this, and our x naught could be somewhere here. This could be our u naught, right? And this ball of radius epsilon. is completely contained inside u naught. Yeah. Uh, so, for j, for j very large, uh, we will have, since our x n, since our x n j is converged to x naught, x n j is going to go belong to b epsilon by 2 x naught. Right. So, we can take the ball of radius epsilon by 2 around x naught. Right? So, we can take this to be x n j. Uh, so, if so, we can choose. So, choose j large so that uh, 1 upon n j is strictly less than epsilon by 2. Right? Then it is easily checked. So, in fact, uh, so if we take the ball, so x and j is here, right, our x and j is here, let us say this is x and j. So, if I take a ball of radius uh, epsilon by 2 around x and j, so, then this ball is also going to be completely contained inside the epsilon ball around x naught. Right. So, then it is easily checked. Okay. So, before that, right. So, then the ball of radius 1 upon nj around x nj is contained in the ball of radius epsilon by 2 around x and j and this ball is going to be completely contained inside the ball of radius epsilon around x naught okay, which is contained in u naught. Okay. But this contradicts, contradicts the assumption that b 1 upon n j x n j is not contained in u i for any i. Right. So, recall that we had constructed this sequence x n by requiring that they satisfy this condition, but we have now contradicted this condition. Okay. So, this proves, this proves claim 1. Okay. Now, let us prove claim 2. In fact, claim 2 is the main assertion, right. So, there is a finite subcover of x. 
okay so let's prove claim 2 So by claim 1, there is a delta such that for every x, b delta x is contained in ui for some i, right. So thus we have b delta by 2 x is contained in b delta x is contained in ui. Okay. So, let us start a process of covering x as follows. So, choose any y 1 in x and let x 1 be equal to b delta by 2 y 1. Okay. So, our x is like this and we can just pick any y1 and we take this ball of radius delta by 2 around y1. So, let me make this again. So, we choose y1 and we take this ball of radius delta by 2 around y1, right. Uh, so, assume that. So, now choose y2 from x minus x 1, right. So, we can choose any y 2 over here which is not in this ball and this y 2 and we take the ball of radius delta by 2 around y 2, right and let x 2 be equal to b delta by 2 y 1 union b delta by 2 y 2, right. So, assume that we have defined x n defined x n ok and define x n plus 1 as follows, right. So, we choose any y n plus 1 in x minus x n and let x n plus 1 be equal to b delta by 2 y n uh, sorry we should y n plus 1 union x n right. So, we have these balls sorry. So, we have these balls and this is our y n plus 1 right. So, then we have x 1 is contained in x 2 is contained in x 3 and so on right. So, we claim that uh, this this process has to stop in finitely many steps ok. Why? what happens if it does not stop? If not, then we get a sequence of points y ends right such that the distance between y i and y j is greater than or equal to uh, delta by 2 for all i not equal to j, right. This is how the y n's have been constructed. We take the open balls uh, of radius delta by 2 around y 1 and we chose y 2 outside that ball, which means that the distance of y 1 from y 2 is greater than or equal to delta by 2. Now, we take open balls of radius delta by 2 around y 1 and y 2 took their union and y 3 was selected outside this. That means that the distance of y 3 from y 1 and y 3 from y 2 is also greater than or equal to delta by 2, right. And this sequence cannot have a convergence subsequence. Right. So thus, uh, this process stops. Right. 
So, this implies that R x is contained in the finite union of P delta by 2 by i's i equal to 1 to some n right and each of these B delta i's is contained in some u j equal to 1 to n u i j right. So, this implies that there is a finite sub cover which implies x is compact. So, this completes the proof of the theorem. So, we will end this lecture here.